Well, back to the campaign trail where Donald Trump is more than halfway to clinching the Republican nomination. He currently has 671 of the 1,237 delegates needed. Ted Cruz is trailing Trump by more than 250 delegates with 401, and John Kasich is in a distant third place. Meanwhile, the front runner is warning of potential violence if he has the highest number of delegates but gets trumped at the Republican convention. Donald Trump told media he expects riots and bad things to happen. With us from Washington are CBS News senior political editor Steve Shigaris and Daily Beast politic, uh, politics reporter rather Betsy Woodruff. Steve, I want to start with you. Uh, Trump says he won't lead the riots. He made that pretty clear yesterday, but he thinks they'll happen if he doesn't win the nomination. What do you make of this public warning? It seems like it's something that could potentially be true because you'd have a lot of angry Trump supporters if he doesn't get it. But it almost came off as a little bit of a, a threat, sort of. Okay, we've been listening to this guy since June 16th of last year, and we take everything he says literally. And I mean, do we think that they're really, like, that, that Donald Trump is there plotting riots in Trump Tower? I mean, I think what he's saying is this. What he's saying is if, if he has the most delegates yet didn't, doesn't clinch the nomination and he winds up getting the most votes in the primary process, yet the party does something to uh, prevent him from getting the nomination, that those people who have supported him will be very upset. Of course, he's using Trumpian language by throwing out the word riots right. and saying bad things are going to happen. I mean, sure, people, a lot of people are going to be very upset about that. Uh, but at the same time, you know, the Republican Party is going to say we have rules and you need to have 1,237 delegates to get the nomination. And if you don't, then uh, we'll go into second and third and have other votes and figure out who the nominee is going to be. But he, what he is suggesting is that his supporters will be very, very upset uh, if he doesn't get the nomination, even if he doesn't clinch uh, the nomination uh, during the primary process. Bessie, same question for you. A bit of hyperbole on Donald Trump's part, or is this something that the Republican Party should really be concerned about? Donald Trump would obviously never use hyperbole. <laughs> <laughs> I think, of course, he's being a little colorful with his language here. That said, of course the party should be concerned. Remember in 2012, Ron Paul's supporters made quite a scene at the convention just because he wasn't allowed to get the certain types of votes that he wanted during the nominating process. Paul wasn't even remotely competitive to actually be the, to be the party's eventual nominee. Compare, think about the support Paul has, the kind of energy he had in 2012. That pales in comparison to the kind of people and the kind of energy behind Donald Trump. I think, of course, we can expect, uh, at the very least, a massive PR problem for the Republican Party if it were to pass that Donald Trump didn't become the nomination despite getting a plurality of delegates. Uh, it's, it's, it's certainly something people should be worried about. That said, at this point, it looks like this is going to come down to a contested convention, which means we don't really know what's going to happen. Uh, it's sort of a political reporter's dream come true, but for the RNC, it's it has the potential to be a big mess. Yeah, big magic eight ball there. Well, Steve, as we know, Trump pulled out of Monday's Republican debate. I find it kind of interesting because at the beginning of the political season, he really said he wanted to whittle it down so that they could really debate each other, that there'd only be a few people on stage. Now he pulls out. He says there have been enough debates. If this pattern continues, does any one candidate suffer? And we should say John Kasich also pulled out of the debate after Trump did. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think it would look really, I think it would look worse for him if the others got on stage and went to that debate and Cruz and Kasich were talking about, hey, where's Donald Trump? But nobody's doing a debate. There's no debate now on Monday. And so I think it just sort of fades away. It's not going to be like the situation where uh, Trump skipped the debate in Iowa and did his own event and then later admitted, maybe I shouldn't have skipped the debate in Iowa. Not being on stage uh, probably hurt me. Uh, so I, I don't know. I mean, he's, he's obviously has some debate fatigue. He referenced this last week uh, at the debate uh, in Florida and said, maybe, uh, maybe I'm not going to be doing any more debating. We've had a dozen debates already. And, uh, and then he said uh, yesterday, how many times can you uh, ask and answer the same questions? Uh, so it, clearly he's got some fatigue. Uh, and, uh, you know, Kasich, I think, threw him some cover by, by bailing on that. And of course, Cruz is going to stand there by himself and debate by himself, is he? <laughs> <laughs> we know could he could do that. TV, yeah. yeah uh, <laughs> we know we can read green eggs and ham, anyways, right? <laughs>